Every time we catch a glimpse of freedom, we look the other way. Whoa, from the bottom of my heart. And if we scream, we can count on reasons, points to resonate. Whoa, from the bottom of my heart. Well, it's about time I coughed up the A part of that Q and A video I announced a few weeks ago. Now I won't be able to get through all the cues, so I've gone through them and picked 20 questions that I thought I could provide interesting answers to, and that make me look really cool. Electric Lord 3 writes, Would you ever consider making a video where you debate slash talk with a feminist or SJW on Google Hangouts or something? I've actually invited plenty of them to do just that. Unfortunately, feminists and SJWs aren't known for their willingness to listen to opposing ideas, so it hasn't happened yet. Most of my interaction with these types of people has been through back and forth response videos, but I'd love to actually speak with more of them. Okay, so serious question. I love your videos, man, and I want to know how you find all these videos. Are they recommended to you, or do you just search them out? Thanks for your question. I do get a lot of videos recommended to me these days, and I always appreciate suggestions. I'm also subscribed to a few of the regular suspects, just to keep an eye on what they're telling the world. Rene Rodriguez says, Big fan here, but I'm obliged to ask, do you hate all Christians, or can you clarify why you seem to hate Jesus so much when you don't even believe in him? You have freedom of speech, free will, etc., and I support that 100%, but it mirrors what you hate about a lot of feminists. Only what they believe can be true. You have to admit that faith and evolution are both theories and can never be proven no matter how many scientists agree on either. I mean that since no one alive today witnessed the spark that set it all off, we can't be sure of anything, and are placing our faith on one theory or the other. I'm opening myself up for attacks from haters, but I love your channel, and know other Christians have too. This one baffles me. I've never remotely suggested that I hate Christians or Jesus. I challenge the idea of Jesus, and I mock Christianity, just like I challenge patriarchy and mock feminism. I can only assume that you've misinterpreted my challenges and mockery as hatred. Which raises the question, do you also see it as hatred when I challenge and mock feminists? And why would you like my channel if in your mind all I do is hate people? I don't hate feminists, Christians, or Jesus for that matter. You seem to be suggesting that if I hold an opinion on something, I am effectively saying, only what I believe can be true. By that logic, isn't your belief in Christianity the equivalent of you making the statement, only Christianity can be true? The theory of evolution is a theory. Faith, on the other hand, is not a theory. Faith is, by definition, belief without proof. I'm a sceptical, independent thinker. It's not in my nature to believe anything without proof. You are the opposite of this. It's not in your nature to prove anything you believe. The mere belief in Christianity is enough proof for you. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Peppered throughout the Bible are stories of people ascending or going up to heaven amongst or above the clouds. For most of Christianity's existence, Christians were told that heaven is literally up amongst or above the clouds, which is why one would ascend or go up to heaven. When mankind gained the ability to fly amongst and above the clouds, we found out that there was no heaven up there. It just didn't exist. From then on, the story changed to something along the lines of, heaven is a real place, but it's outside of this dimension. But if this is the case, then why all the talk about ascending to heaven amongst the clouds? I mean, I thought the Bible was the word of God. So was God wrong, or was God lying? Norberto Herrera writes, Will you answer this question in your Q&A? Yes. Smells Like E Minor writes, Questions. 1. Can I change my cunt status? 2. How long does it take you to record, typically? 3. Do you think you'll ever cover another topic? Thanks for your question, mate. You can change your cunt status if you want to. Do you want to? The time it takes to produce a video varies depending on things like total length, the level of research involved, the amount of graphics and imagery involved, etc. But to give you a couple of quick examples, this recent video took four or five hours from start to finish, whereas this one only took an hour and a half to two hours. I do cover a few different topics now, but the majority of my videos do focus on modern feminism and social justice. But that's not because I have a particular interest in feminism or social justice. My channel's focus is on stupidity and bad ideas. It just so happens that at this point in time, feminism and social justice are the stupidest movements with the worst ideas. Robert Nickel asks, 
Is there a level of fame where you'd lose all sense of reality and go off the rails and do drugs all day and shit? Sure, around 10,000 subscribers. <laughs> Mark Kennedy writes, If you deliberately put your hand on an electric fence, does it still count as an electric shock? I don't know, Mark, but that's a fucking good question. Walter Sullivan writes, This isn't easy for me to admit, but I'm often hesitant and unsure as to what to call myself or what position to hold on some issues, and it makes me feel lost or that I'm too impressionable, which I tend to feel is sad because I'm in my late 20s. Do you think there's something wrong with me bearing? Nothing that isn't wrong with the rest of us. The fact that you hesitate on these things means that you're not convinced on a particular position or label, and that means that you're critically thinking about things, which is a good thing. As information becomes available, it's factored into your thought process, continually shaping and reshaping your views and opinions. Don't let this prevent you from expressing an opinion today as you hold it today. Jack Wheeler writes, I've seen a few of your videos. They've made me laugh, I have to say. Do I maybe disagree with you on some things? Sure. But I'm somebody who thinks disagreements need to be broached via intelligent debate and dialogues rather than shutting down and demonising those you disagree with. My question is, at the end of the day, what is the goal you seek to accomplish with your channel? Good question, Jack. The goal of my channel is to entertain. Along the way, we might look at some numbers, but I'm not an analyst or a statistician. And we may learn something here and there, but I'm certainly not a fucking educator. This will sound odd, but I agree with you in relation to disagreements. A lot of people these days have trouble distinguishing between an attack on their ideas and an attack on their character, which sadly inhibits that intelligent debate and dialogue you're talking about. Now I'm embarrassed to say, but I got fucking pwned on this next one. Remember the video where I announced this Q&A? And fuck my ass sideways, my channel's just passed 10 million views. Well, the Justicar Hi, left this comment. Fucks your ass sideways. Bear back. Shameful. Although when it comes to making gay jokes, the Justicar is suspiciously talented. Michael Dressner writes, Where are you on the political spectrum? I don't really know, Michael. Maybe I should do one of those political compass tests and find out. Justin Nelson writes, Who do you watch on YouTube that does similar content to you? Most people have that select group of channels they watch religiously that is close to every, if not every, video they release. Mine includes Dr. Randa McCam, Sargon of Akkad, Skag3, Gary Awesome, Grade A Under A, and of course, Sugar Tits. And I'm not just saying that because she lets me touch her boobies either. Some channels headed for that list that have really caught my attention recently include The Satiritician, Kraut and Tea, and Atheism is Unstoppable. It's not that fucking hard to say. Kangaroo brain? Crescent writes, Bearing, I'm curious what video editing software and microphone brand do you use? Also, I just wanted to say thank you for your awesome content. Well, <laughs> no problem, mate. Your channel is amazing and I really respect your dedication to the content and to your audience. Thanks for your question, Crescent. For video editing, I use a program called Camtasia. In terms of audio, I use an AKG Perception 200 wide diaphragm condenser mic and run it through a pre-Sonus vacuum tube preamp. I use Audacity for recording and editing audio and always just make sure I've got a few pillows strategically positioned to help dampen any room reverb. Shoe on Head writes, Do you think humour is the best way to reach an audience to expose them to the stupidity that is our current society? It's certainly a good way to reach a wide audience. Everyone likes to laugh. Whether or not it's the best way to expose that audience to the stupidity that is our current society is an interesting question. I'm sure there's far more effective ways of delivering cold hard facts and information, but then if I were to focus more on the effective delivery of cold hard facts and information, it would mean focusing less on humour, and I really don't think I'd have the audience that I do without the humour. So to bring this home, I think humour is an excellent way to reach an audience and to expose them to the stupidity of our current society. Is it the best way? Dunno. How would you answer this question? Braden Greer writes, What's your all-time favourite guitar, even if you've never owned it? My personal favourite is a 1961 Fender Stratocaster. Mine would depend on what it's being used for. If it were being played with a clean signal, I'd go with a pre-65 Fender Telecaster. 
but if I was playing in a punk band and was after a powerful, dirty sound, I'd want to be using a Gibson Firebird, preferably one from the mid to late 60s. I'm nowhere near as picky when it comes to acoustic guitars. I've been very happy with this Tanglewood Nashville 3 for the last couple of years. Well, that's all I've got time for. My sincere thanks to everyone who's supported my channel, whether that be through sponsoring my videos on Patreon or simply liking and sharing them. I'll see you again soon. You know, watching my channel grow as quickly as it has, has been fucking incredible. It's nice to know that there's so many people out there who enjoy watching my videos as much as I enjoy making them. Like anyone else, I've got cubs to feed and bills to pay, so I really appreciate all the support that I get. It allows me to create and publish better videos at a faster rate. If you'd like to throw something in the hat as well, you can either support my videos on a continuing basis through Patreon, or by making a one-time donation via PayPal. You'll find links in the description. If you can't or don't want to, that's okay too. You can help my channel grow by liking and sharing this video. Thanks for watching.